Wow. I think we are right on time, folks. So it's Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And it is one of it is our rare figure reaction shows. Uh, we want to appreciate everybody who is joining us live. We want to appreciate everyone who's going to be joining us on the replay club. I am True Star Screamer. With me is Mike from Junk and Crafts and Builds. And oh, down really? below us is our special guest tonight, uh, freelance illustrator, Mr. Quentin Bedwell. And you guys here, who are, for all of you who are new, we again, we appreciate you coming by. For all of you who are regulars, always fantastic to see you. But more importantly, anything else, let's roll that footage. That was the wrong footage. Whoopsie. It was good, though. It was good. But, <laughs> uh, where's, it? where's my footage? Oh, there it is. Yep. I swear that it's never happened to me before. It's, <laughs> ever since I got in my 40s, I just it, it goes off easier, I guess. It happens in the 40s. All oh, happens in the in the 40s. <clears throat> All right. Well, now that we are on here, again, welcome everyone, everyone in the chat. Mo series, what's up, man? I got a chance to meet him at uh, Joe Fest last year. Great guy. Cut through comics. Welcome aboard, and of course. The Titan and Toy Mafia are regulars. Thank you once again. <clears throat> so to kind of peek why we, we have this great opportunity to talk tonight, um, one of the things that always gets me in regards to collecting, it's, it's, it's a combination of senses, um, whether it's touching that figure, you know, looking around at the quantities, talking to each other and getting impressions on what everyone likes with their opinions, seeing displays but what really sells it right off the jump is the way the figure is depicted and we have different varieties of doing that but the most creative way is through illustration and who we have on here tonight has been in the business for 16 years as dave was saying quentin you are well versed in this art form so i would like to have the opportunity for you to just kind of introduce yourself to everyone and uh we'll get going we'll get going here well uh quentin bedwell illustrator uh writer comic artist graphic artist i do uh, i don't just do toy packaging i do uh game art i do uh comics do uh I do t-shirts, cups, bags, whatever. I mean, I, I printing and just the, uh, you know, the visual stuff is just uh, the tip of the iceberg on all the stuff I do. If it's got anything to do with art where I can apply my illustration craft, then I, I do it. Uh, the toy packaging and stuff has kind of always been a dream of mine along with comics. And it was a little late coming, but uh, man, it's it's been a real... Uh, a real ride, a real blessing, the way I fell into it. Um, I do uh, YouTube uh, art and stuff, and um, I'm just really enjoying it. Uh, it's been a good time, for sure. And I love Valiverse. I love uh, Action Force uh, and Action Farce. Uh, <laughs> I like to laugh. I like uh, YouTube. And, you know, I just like to apply my talents, my gifts to stuff that I'm into. And, uh you know, that's, that's, uh, that's me. That's, that's what I like to do. So, uh, that's it's really hard. Sometimes you get tied to stuff you don't necessarily really like and you do it, but it, you know, you don't really have the soul and the fun in it, you know, but with this stuff, I just love it. You know, I, obviously I'm a collector. So, uh, got one uh, or two things back there. Yeah. Just a few. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess with that, are you just, is this just self-taught with your art form or did you go to uh, any sort of school? I've never been, or? never been formally trained. I did, uh, I did go, uh, you know, here and there. I took some classes on portrait art when I was younger. I was, uh, I 
I did like, uh, I learned how to airbrush back in the nineties. Um, you know, stuff like, stuff like that, but nothing formal, no college, none of that stuff. I mean, but you know, when you love something, no matter what it is, you will do all of the study and the hard work that you had to do to, to be able to get better at it. And my focus was to get into comics. And if, if you haven't heard comics used to be, uh, a very hard business to get into. And I have been ripped by the best. I mean, I, I've gotten rejection letters and all that stuff. And finally, kind of the, you know, my story is, is I finally kind of got up to the level. And when I did, the comic industry was pretty much gutted. And mm, I know that not, feeling. On, not only that, but once I finally got to where I could compete, it kind of wasn't a place I really wanted to be once I saw what all was coming out, you know? And uh, okay. so then I just decided to go my own way with it. And, um, you know, so I started doing my own stuff. And then cool. every now and then I would go off and do some stuff for other people. So. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, I'm, when you say that, you know, you had rejection letters, I'm assuming that we get it from the big three. Oh Yeah. Marvel, yeah. DC, Image, uh, individual creators like Eric Larson. He was especially, <laughs> he was especially, uh, he, he grew me quite a bit. Uh, oh, okay. But, uh, really? well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, so, some of these guys, and, and look, let me, I, I'm not, I'm not throwing shade at anybody, but, you know, some of these artists take it from, the standpoint of they're going to rip you hard for one to make sure that this is what you want to do. And two, yeah. uh, you know, they're going to tell, they, they're going to be friendly enough to tell you exactly how it is and how much you stink, you know, so to make you get better, to make you, <clears throat> and if you, if you really love it, you'll get better. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I understand it. I get it. You know, a lot of people, though, they they don't take criticism well. They get criticism and they just, you know, they start railing on people. And, you know, look, if somebody says your stuff stinks, then get better. And uh, if you think that they're basing it off of something that is maybe, you know, BS, then, you know, bypass it. You know, you just got to work your craft, get better at it, keep on working it. And, it, you know, it'll happen. You know? Yeah, it's. I mean, I can even. I mean, I, that's one thing. That when I was growing up, my my uncle always was like, you know what? If someone says you're, so, you know, you need to get better or something, then maybe you take their advice and stop, you know, <laughs> without without going as and as colorful as he is, you know, sitting in your in your dirty drawers crying about it. Just get up and keep working at it. Um, is there been a particular uh, a particular co comic or character that you? wanted to do that you submitted for and it just something didn't happen or or i mean i i guess maybe i should say of your of your with your experience in comics and just loving them it, what's your favorite characters in 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 comics today well uh man my favorite all-time character as far as marvel goes is dr doom he's always been my favorite from a uh, there, I mean, I started out with uh, in Marvel Comics with Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. Doom was the man and he has always been the man to me. And then secondarily uh, was Spider-Man, because even though Dr. Doom uh, had just such a solid to me, the most solid origin story, uh, Spider-Man was always lighthearted. And, you know, you, I always loved that about Spider-Man and. You know, in recent years, you know, if you have it, if you used to read them, it was a lot more lighthearted. Now it's more dismal and depressing and all that kind of stuff. You, I, I will say this. If you haven't read it in a while, the last run of Amazing Spider-Man is the most Spider-Man run I've ever read. Well, that's good to hear. That I is mean, good to hear. If you, like, I don't know if you've got a comicsology or things like that. I'm blanking out the writer. Anything when he, when, and I kid you not, the super villain Boomerang was his roommate. Any of that run is the best Spider-Man I have read in the last 15 years. Well, it I have to give it a shot. Laugh. 
It will make you smile. It will make you cry. He does. Spy it was the best Spider-Man. I. We have a guy, a parts former. I've been trying to get him to read that run. I don't know how, for how long. Well, I had to give it a shot then because that, that really gives me hope because there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I would check in over the years, time to time into stuff and just see where it was at, what it was doing. And sometimes I would be interested, but more and more as we've gotten farther, it just seems like, man, this is, you know, this is not Wolverine. This is not Punisher. This is not, you know, and uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It ain't, it ain't, come on. It's it. We're in our fourth. It ain't what it was for us. Yeah, exactly. And, but, and you know, I'm not, you know, if that's a, if that, if the new generation enjoys it, which I don't, I don't particularly think that they're really reaching a lot of people because I mean, the sales reflect it, you know, that's, that's right. just, uh, that's just me. I think it's uh, more ideology and things that are driving things right now. And well, I'll you know, say this, like the nineties, the big guns and pouches, I can understand why the people who read it in the 60s weren't fans of that either. Yep, absolutely. I, that's how I look yeah. at it. It's it's not ours. This is theirs. But like I said, that's... Well, that's, it's like this. Look, I, I tried to introduce Ninja Turtles to my kids. Uh, mm -hmm. And I tried several times. And they just, they just didn't, you know, they <clears> didn't take on it. Right. And the then out of nowhere... The Nickelodeon day, CGI series is the best iteration of it period. well this is this is what happened is just out of nowhere they started getting into ninja turtles but it wasn't the ninja turtles that i was introducing to them it was the 2012 run of nickelodeon ninja turtles and they fell in love with them i mean they were mm -hmm. watching them every day i ended up buying them all the figures and a play set and they just went crazy. Cool. And, I, and I started watching it. And, you know, it was actually really good. I couldn't believe how good it actually was. I can't recommend that. That's awesome. Than, yeah. But that goes to show, though, you know, that uh, they weren't into my Ninja Turtles, but they were into theirs. And that was fine. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. and I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff. I mean, I'm open minded about this stuff. I don't. Oh, um, I, mean, <laughs> I will say I agree. If, if no one's ever watched that 2012 Ninja Turtles show. There is an episode where the 1980s turtles do show up and they get. Yes. All yeah. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> so it was really good. That, that, you, that is, that's why I say that is possibly the uh, perfect geek show. So. Now, and, and I think we're seeing a lot of introduction into new stuff, but through different ways for good and bad. I mean, as you were saying with your, with your children picking up TMNT, my son, when we, when he first came back, <clears throat> I couldn't get him to read anything, but you get him in front of Fortnite, and he knew all the lore, the characters yep. behind things. So it's, it's just a different medium that we're all getting used to. And, you know, as, as cutthroat just pointed out, I mean, the new GI Joe series, that's how long has it been since we had, you know, we've had a new run or a continuation on things. And it's not anything new. It's not tied to the new modern classified line. It's made for gentlemen, our ages that still want to read that old storyline and, it's drawn or you know written by the same amazing writer that's been on it for well what is since the 80 years 40 years for since uh, the real american hero line also 82, the right? TMNT run is also f fantastic cuz peter laird re uh, no kevin eastman basically rewrote it i highly recommend that too <clears throat> yeah. awesome there's some good oh. yeah. So, so going into this and exploring, as we have here on the slide, exploring, exploring art and character, if we can roll to the next one, maybe you can kind of help us out with Silverline Comics. Now, you said before you had some rejection letters here and there, but this company, thankfully for them, brought you on board. So can you tell me about your experience there? Yeah, well, uh, story leading up to Silverline Comics is back in 2009. I had, uh, I had been get, I had been submitting and stuff, and I'd finally kind of gotten my, you know, comic skills up to par. But I kind of saw what the comic industry was doing, as I said before, and I just decided I was going to do my own thing. So I did do my own thing. I put out my own book, mm -hmm. and uh, there was like a the last thing I I did was a Zuda contest for D DC. They used to have this contest where you could you know, do the contest. If you win, you could, you know, have your 
comic published and all that. Anyway, I did really good on it. I got third. And so I just started doing my own stuff and it mm -hmm. was good. But then what started happening is, is uh, I started having trouble with my hands. And when I say trouble with my hands, I'm talking about numbness, tingling, mm. and it got really bad. And over the years, over the next few years, from 2009 all the way up to 2018, like it had gotten to the point where I couldn't even hold things in my hands. And I was still yeah. having to work my day job, which I'm in a graphic <laughs> artist in. And I'm, I'm telling you, I was taking pain medication. I was taking, and when I say pain medication, I don't mean like, you know, hydrocodone or any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about just mm -hmm. pain relievers like aspirin, ibuprofen. It's been a, you know, it mm -hmm. had been a daily thing. And uh, it got so to where I was starting to try to find other stuff that I could do, uh, you know, in the future, because I was like, you know, I'm not going to be able to keep this up. I'm going to have to stop art. I'm going to have to stay. And it was really a really hard time for me. And that's why there's the, for between those times, there's really nothing. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, what ended up happening was I got to the point where, and I, and during that time, I would not get surgery because I had met people and talked to them at length about their surgery for carpal tunnel. And they had lost function of, you know, and and levels of function with their hands and mm -hmm. you know, it just always scared me but then eventually it got to the point where i was in so much pain all the time doing anything that i it wouldn't matter if i switched job jobs because there's no job except dancing maybe <laughs> that doesn't use your hands you know right and um and you know so i i was like i've got to have the surgery and i had the surgery and I didn't expect much from it. I figured I would come out on the, but anyway, I got the full range of my hands back with okay. no pain. Fantastic. And it was like a, a, you know, a second lease on life. You know, here I've been cranking everything down, preparing for the time when I'm not going to be able to do art at all anymore. And he now here I'm back. So then it was like, you know, a time thing, you know, where am I going to set aside, aside time for all this? And I decided, you know, the only time that I had that I could put aside was like my consuming time. So mm -hmm. I had to decide, am I going to be a consumer or a producer? And I decided I'm going to be a producer. And when I did, I started going out looking for extra stuff besides my day job. And uh, I, I knew uh, Roland Man through uh, he worked at Malibu Comics. He was an editor at Malibu way back in the day. For those who remember Malibu, he had a whole team of people. And that that is pretty much what Silver Line is, is all the people that you knew back in the 90s for Malibu. They had gotten back together and they're just kind of rolling out comics hmm. on Kickstarter. Hmm. Okay. And, and so that's how I got with them. And he had, uh, you know, saw some of my work and um, put me out there. So. And I just started going and um, that is really what started really honing, you know, honing my craft again. I was actually able to start leveling up again. So, okay. yeah. Well, can you tell me about uh, some of the, the selection we have on the screen here? Can you tell me about these characters? Yep. Uh, Wolf Hunter is a uh, 1940s World War II. Um, they, they had... The, these in real life wolf, called wolf hunters and they were spy hunters pretty much. And uh, okay. that is a book done by a fellow by the name of Tim TK. You can find him online and he, he does that book regularly. They, they kickstart it uh, whenever he has a new issue. Twilight Graham that I just, just did the cover for that. Um, <laughs> and also on the night creeper, that is something that is current with uh, Anthony Horton who you'll see in the 3PO a and other, you know, toy things. He has a lot of uh, really, really cool looking comic characters. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it is really worth checking out. He is called okay. Shoebox heroes. Um, and we've been talking about doing stuff for the longest and just trying to match schedules up and, you know, workloads and all that kind of stuff. Just hadn't been able to do it yet. 
So awesome. I'm definitely be checking that okay. out. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely. good. And he's he's got a lot of good people mm. that do work with him. And he he's a great artist as well. And mm. he keeps me up to date on stuff that's going on if there's contests or okay. whatever. And you know, cool guy. Well, if you can, cool guy. Yeah, if you can give us the information, we'll definitely update the description and the comments in this in this stream and actually, you know, get their information out there to people. Sure. So that would be fantastic. All right. <clears throat> so we have Silverline that you've done work with before, and now we can move on, Dave. You can hit the next slide for me. You also, as you said, it's not just comic book pages and that. You do a lot of different type of media, and this, you were telling us earlier, is for a, a card game. So yes, what can you talk uh, about this? Yes, uh, War Infinite is a card game. I'm currently, it is, I, I would say, developing, but it has already been play-tested. Um, Matter of fact, I've got to uh, hold on. Let me grab it. Sure. I've got it right here. It's a uh, battle in a box. Uh, it, it has not come out yet. Uh, I'm kind of trying to build, you know, a little bit of uh, social media up a little bit before I kick started or something to actually get it out to people. Okay. But, uh, may, you know, I mean, if, people aren't going to buy your stuff if they're not aware of you or aware of what you have. Right. So you kind of have to build your audience for whatever you're going to do. And this right here, it's a uh, war, war reforged, not war infinite. I changed the name. It's war, war reforged. And it's uh, a card game that two decks come in a box. You can sit down mm -hmm. with somebody and play and, uh you know the biggest thing is is it's about a 25 dollars for both decks and there'll be expansions that are put out uh and okay. it, it's a really cool game it's a really economic battle real world uh military type game but it is kind of set in the future as you can tell by the fella here he is you know got a little bit of sci-fi going on oh i like it I've been playing a hell of a lot of hell, hell divers. And then I first saw that, I'm like, okay. You yeah. Blowing up that's my rocket. jam. That's my oh. jam in sci fi. I love it. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'll, I, I'll, I'll just step away for the next 30 minutes. You two can talk about hell divers because I, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. And I do have to apologize. The quality of the of the chat group has gone down because there's this guy called Kato. I don't know if you guys have heard about him or not. Oh, man. But he Come says he on. knows you. I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> that dude right, but, so so you said like the this the the car game is getting tested it's going to be out i mean as soon as i hear that properly yeah or? uh i'm not i'm not putting a date on it quite yet because mm -hmm. i just want everything to line up first i want and i do want to get some stuff going that i have going right now before but it is actually complete it is actually ready to go uh, it's been proofed. It's been play tested. It's, uh, I mean, what you see here, the the cards and everything. It's it's all ready to go. I all I have to do is make it available. Uh, okay. So and, and I'm how, just trying how, to decide how to do it. Okay, that's what I was going to really say. How do you how do you want to plan on releasing that out to everyone? Is it something that's going to be kind of readily available or are we looking more of a, of a niche or like a, a virtual store type of what I, element? What I have mean? right now is it's through gamecrafter.com. Hmm. And so if any of you guys, by the way, you know, unlike when we were growing up guys, whatever it is that you have an idea for anymore, you can do it. Like if you <clears> want to do comics, you can do comics. If you want to do games, you can do games. You know, it's not like when we were, growing up or when we were younger, I mean, this is a wonderful time for creators to be able to do the things they want to do. And gamecrafter.com gives you the ability to make your own board games, your own card games. It's got a storefront that you can put those in for people to purchase. So, I mean, it's pretty much as much uh, as, as simple as me pressing publish on a publish button and it being available for everybody to go and get. Huh. Oh, that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. And they do all the printing. It's print on demand. Remember that for later. I'll yes. Remember that. Gamecrafter.com. We'll those, those three words, print on demand. We'll be talking. I want to talk about that later. Okay. 
Um, right. We also have some really nice, uh, are these the fantasy work that we have here. Um, I know these are commissions for D and D uh, characters. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I got in really heavy when I got my hands back is the way I always refer to it after the dark mm -hmm. ages, when I got my hands back, uh, <laughs> It was it was just a really good. I, ha, I know a lot of D and D gamers, and uh, I did one, and man, they just really started pouring in after that. And I was like, well, it looks like I'm a you know D and D character, you know, artist creator. So that's what I did, and I, I just did a lot of them. This is I've got so many, and I have a, I have a little bit of a rule that I don't post stuff unless people post it first and then I'll share it, you know, uh, because I don't like to, okay. you know, once I, once I do something for somebody, it's theirs and they get to say, you know, what happens with it. So, you know, these are ones that I, you know, I asked them, Hey, I, I need some stuff for, you know, my portfolio. Do you mind if I have this somewhere? Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I really try to stick to that rule because I got in trouble once, once. And oh, I decided okay. after that, I'm not, posting anything else that i do for people unless they give me permission or i share it so i understand that's kind of it, it might seem a little little uh, uh repetitive in our little chats but that's one thing i want to make sure is we had your permission for stuff and yeah you I were totally really good about that too i appreciate that <laughs> and genuinely curious absolutely uh it you know you know, having the artist uh, or the creator mind is a blessing and a curse. It's because it, as much as it is a, it is therapy, you know, to get away uh, from stuff. You know, it's escapism. You know, you get into your own worlds and all that kind of stuff. But it's also kind of a compulsion. You know, if mm -hmm. I don't draw, if I don't do things, if I'm not creating stuff, make, I even make some dioramas and stuff. You know, if I'm not doing something, I start feeling it and other people start noticing too because I kind of get start getting a little, you know, out of we sorts. Oh, yeah. Mississippi <laughs> phrase, out of sorts. <laughs> yeah. I understand. My rollkeeper knows what it's about. Rollkeeper knows what it's about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So okay, so then of course we've got some, this is some really cool comic art, I have to say. Um I love that this version of the Punisher. That's why that's why I put that one in the center. Well, I yeah, I love the Punisher. He is one of my favorite uh and you know, part of the thing about uh in comics, uh, you know, every character and I think everybody does this to some extent. You see a character. There's only been one character where I, I I didn't think to myself, man, if I were to do it, I'd do it like this. And the only character that that is is Doctor Doom. He's the only one that you know I've looked or, or Spider Man. I love Spider Man. Mm -hmm. I love Doctor Doom. But there's some that I just felt sometimes where they they got it right, but then most of the time they kind of oh you didn't push it hard enough. You know he's a he's gritty. He's mm -hmm. mean. You know. And uh, yeah, I love the Punisher. I love Captain America when they do him right. You know, um, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Got another question. We got another question from the audience for you here. Um, who is who is your currently your favorite artist that you enjoy in comics today? Uh, favorite artist today, mm. I, I probably which he is retiring now is um, oh my goodness. And if you hadn't asked me, I would have been able to tell you his name, but his name escapes me. He he just did uh, the Doomsday Clock. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, Gary, oh Gary my Frank? gosh. Yes, Gary Frank. Gary Frank is probably a man. I look at his work. He is so good. He is so good. His lines and the way he does shadowing and all that stuff. I mean, he is a magician with ink. Uh, I, I love his stuff. I, I love uh, Campbell. I love. Um, I mean, there's not there. There's I love all the big ones for different reasons. I love David Finch. David Finch is amazing. <clears throat> I mean, and and I've seen his work grow. And I, I mean, I loved it way back when. But <clears throat> I mean, the stuff he's doing now, where it's a seems to be a little bit rougher. 
uh, I love everything that guy does. Um, but but growing up in in the nineties, I mean, McFarlane, of course, was my favorite. Yeah. Jim Lee, Sylvester, <clears throat> all of them I'm, were. You know, I'm sorry, did I hear Rob Liefeld in that mix? No, he. I did. Not. I did not say Rob <laughs> Liefeld. <laughs> but but I will say about Rob Liefeld, I always envied where he got. You know, but he was also the one that kind of pushed me because you know look if this guy if he can do it yeah i could be i could be in there i could be doing hey, look, this listen, you know? based <laughs> on both the captain america and that spider-man you are ahead by a, a low I'm, I'm seeing feet here i am seeing yeah because you saw the feet <laughs> <laughs> well he's had a, a a big even though it is as it is and history is what it is he mm -hmm. has made a pretty big impact so Absolutely. just to say I mean, something positive on the, mm -hmm. on the his his comic book characters got into a cartoon. Yep. Yeah. You know? That's pretty it, amazing. Yeah. So so when you would say about Gary and, and the other influence you have, the, the following question for Cutthroat is with your favorite artist, would who would you want to do a collaboration with? Whether it was a, a just someone who wants to do inks, is there someone that you guys, you know, someone who does amazing like dual page spread splash pages or that really fine detail or how would you who would you want to work with and how would you like that to to, to come around oh man i don't even know i would love i'm not uh i'm not that i am not that great of an inker i have only and the only reason why i used to think that i was i used to think i was a great inker and that's kind of the way it is when you're in your own world and you're in your own head and you're doing your own thing. But then you meet a professional and <clears> then they're like, you ask them, Hey, what do you think about this? And they're like, well, and they run down the list and then you see it like you couldn't see it before, but you see what they're talking about. So, uh, I, you know, I am not that great of an inker. I'm more of a penciler is probably where I would go with that. Now, my inking has gotten better uh, because mm -hmm. of, because I do listen to criticism and I take, you know, uh, you know, I take, I take criticism uh, as, you know, and I try to correct or try to meet, you know, try to do better. <laughs> um, man, I don't know. I don't so know. So you think probably. you're a good inker, huh? Here's a J Lee print from 96. What yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> God. Well, you know, there was a time and you don't know these things until you know them, but there was a time when I was just thinking, well, that's just his style. You know, that's just the way he does it. It's all subjective, but there are, and that may be true with some of it, but there is a rule <clears throat> behind a lot of stuff that you don't realize there's a rule behind, you know, there's fundamentals there that are at work that yes, there is some style involved with it and it's subjective, but there is like a base rule that you're going by to, to begin with. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. So, and you know, when, when somebody tells you, Hey, you, you're kind of doing this wrong now that you've asked me finally, <laughs> you know, so. Oh, sorry, Dave. I didn't mean to. Take care because we've got more questions, man. I love this. I love the interaction that we have within our group here. She's living so, up to her uh, Yeah. If you were getting the opportunity to work with an author or to do a graphic novel of their work, who would you like to work with? I I am I would work with anybody, honestly. Anybody who is uh is into the kind of stuff that I'm into. Uh the way Silverline would do it is they would give you five different pitches that you could read over. And I really liked the way they did that. And you could decide without knowing who the person was or anything. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you would talk to them and that, you know, you would kind of match up that way. And I really enjoyed that. And as long as they're willing to take my questions and not be condescending or any of that kind of stuff, you know, or, you know, be available. That's another thing, too, because I've been with writers before that, I mean, like they just give you what they want to give you and then they just kind of like send you out to you go do it, you know, and mm -hmm. and then tell you everything you did wrong whenever you send them stuff back. You know, I don't I don't like that. You know, if they're no, easy to work I, with, 
you know, I'm, I'm okay with working with anybody, but if there was somebody I had to say, you know, I'd, I'd love to do some stuff by, you know, uh, I, I, I'll just say, I'd like to do stuff with Bobby Vela, you know, or, or <laughs> we're, we, we've been talking for quite a bit, so we'll see what happens. You well, know, I know I'd for like a fact to... he happens to be watching the, no, he's not, but, uh, well, and I think that kind of leads into our, our next slides here is that you've taken all this experience and it's more than just putting it, you know, taking your creativity and putting it in, trying to tell a story with one picture. You've also developed your storytelling prowess and sequential art, which is kind of what we see up here. And I think the two side pieces here are also from this, uh, from, from the, the card game, if I'm correct. Uh, this from a different thing that is a board oh, okay. game. Relic Quest. Okay. Yeah. It is a side, it is a story comic that goes along with the board game. It, it's not crucial to the board game, but it's kind of made in that world. So. Okay. And then we also, we were also blessed by seeing this wonderful sequence piece you did a few months back when uh, Gemini came out and you did this fantastic series of images about her and about some of the swarm that is are both creations of Valiverse. And I really loved seeing all the interaction on Facebook when you put those those images out. And I'm telling you, whatever you say about your inking, that stuff is phenomenal. So that Thank was you. I appreciate it. really great. So so you kind of say sometimes you know the writers that you collaborate well, it helps put together that sequence. Is that kind of like, you know, how do you go through that process of saying, all right, I have this story of kind of breaking it down. How do I go into kind of like, I, I forgive my crudeness with it, but like the Jenga placement of, of the, of the images on the page. How do you go well, through that process? So, uh, you kind of hit it a little bit different every time, but it usually starts out with a, an idea or a notion of sometimes it could be like in movie form. Sometimes it's just a image that you get in your head. Mm -hmm. And then it's like the narrative just kind of starts building off of it. And then like in your off time when you're doing stuff and you're just, it just keeps on creeping into your head. And then it, you know, it starts kind of building itself in your mm -hmm. head. And then, you know, uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just, sketch stuff down and uh in thumbnails you know and i'll start setting up panels and all that kind of stuff of you know how things would transpire and uh that's kind of how i do it sometimes but i but like on action farce which we'll get I, i'm sure we'll probably get to later i actually had mm -hmm. to write out the scripts for that because the scripts out of respect for bobby for valiverse for action force I mean, I mm -hmm. let him know everything that I was doing step by step. And sure enough, there was stuff that I had to change because of whatever reason, you know, maybe something was a little too controversial, believe it or not, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. or maybe something was just not, you know, we don't really want to bring that in to, you know, or we don't want to highlight that, you know, and it was good that I did that. But most of the time, like when I, when I did this Gemini thing, I had a picture of her behind she she was on the uh the guns just giving them the what for and that's how it started and and then the ideas just started rolling from there and it was like scene after scene just just pop, popping in my head <laughs> and then I went started going to thumbnails doing this stuff out um mm -hmm. as far as the composition I mean it's just you know I mean, you may go through five or six thumbnails of pages before you land on one that's like, okay, this is this is a good panel for this, and it works with the rest of the page. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it can get pretty pretty aggravating sometimes because you have to think about pacing. You have to think about, uh, you know, there's certain rules to sequential art, like, uh, you know, how big your gutters are from top to bottom and side to side because of how quick things are happening. Okay. And when you go to the next page, you have to think, you know, you can't just carry an action that's happening really fast, you know, over pages. Sometimes you have to do it on that page. 
and you have mm -hmm. to have an ender page. It's a lot of stuff sometimes, and it can get a little confusing. And sometimes it gets to the point where you get a little bit too technical and you just have to scrap the technical and do what you do, you know, make it look cool, mm -hmm. you know. So um, you kind of, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, because I just have two more questions here I want to throw, we had to throw out. Sure. Uh, once again, listen, we appreciate all these chats. And while you can't give us money, I'd like to say, Every chat from you guys is a super chat. <laughs> uh, from the Titan a little earlier, you mentioned how the comic industry is currently gutted, but with the rise of independent stuff, do you feel like it kind of gives you almost like a, like, there's hope for it all? I think there is hope. Uh, I think it's just a matter of, uh, you know, the right set of things happening. And I think that, the potential is there, but, you know, I think that there are still some bruises that have to be taken. And I think that there's some, you know, still some people that have to, uh, you know, learn some lessons before, <clears throat> before it happens. That's just what I think. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, um, you know, because I mean, there's people <clears throat> who get in positions that, you know, you're not going to move them until and and it just feels like some some of these people they're willing to watch it burn as long as they can get their stuff out there yeah you know and if they can't change the way you think about stuff then they'd rather you rather burn the whole thing down than let somebody have something good and make mm -hmm. money off of it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i mean it's like it, it baffles me yeah. um I mean, we see it in the YouTube community as well with reviewers, you know, large channels and smaller. Some of them that their whole concept is just to, to stir the pot for whatever reason. Yeah. Small, I, small channels. Small channels. <laughs> well, I, I, I swear, you know, they if, they if they can't change the audience, then they want this thing to die because the wrong audience is here <clears throat> and they don't want them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. I, I think that's what's going on. I, I, I do see the potential, and I do like that Ripaverse, uh, even Comicsgate, you know, they have their place. Uh, you know, a lot of people give them a lot of junk, but hey, you know, different comics, different audiences, you know, if you like this, then do that. <clears throat> if you like this, then do that, you know. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that's, I was saying, that's kind of like your, what you had said earlier, the rise of the independent illustrator the in independent writer there are ways to get your message out and there are audiences and it's just that delicate balance uh a dance so to speak uh to kind of get your message across at, while still being respectful for other creators such as your you know and that's you know and that's one thing you got to remember too is whenever you see something that you don't really particularly care for and that's why i try not to be too critical about stuff is that you know i hear people say oh, this is just garbage you know this is hot garbage this is trash and i agree with them you know on a lot of the stuff but at the same time if it is something and I'm talking toys, I'm talking creations, you know, any kind of media, if it is obviously something that is of inferior quality, you know, if your figure, you get your figure and he's too rubbery or his joints aren't right or, you know, if there's something obviously wrong with it, it is garbage. OK, it's not subjective. It's garbage. <laughs> they they could have done better on quality. But if you got a figure that is just something you really don't like, then you should just say it's not for me. You shouldn't call yeah. it garbage. You know, you ought to be a little mm -hmm. bit more grown up about it than, you know, I don't like it. So it's crap, you know, <laughs> because well, somebody does like it. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not your thing. But, so. And then to go back to what you said, also these days, if you're so good at it, make it your try to make your own. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, Which we're living in a this? great yeah, we're living in a great time. If you were to put out your own book, would it be horror, superhero, or possibly military? I think it would be. Uh, I think it would be the sci-fi military. That is, I don't, I don't know why I'm in that right now. I just, uh, I just I, love that that whole genre. Uh, after we get uh, off the show, there's after, after we get off, after we go off the air, there's a there's a series I'll recommend for you from the '80s you might like. Awesome. So. Yeah. 
So let's so, keep, I guess, move. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. So so kind of going and we'll, we'll kind of close out on like the, the technical side of things and get more into like what drives you going in through things today is the, the you, through your discussions tonight and, and how you kind of work your magic and making these images come to life. Are you still a traditionalist in regards to you have to have pen and paper in front of you, or are you kind of adopting more of the virtualized, the more technical drawing pads and, and, and programs today, or is it a mix of both for you? It's a mix of both. Uh, a lot of my thinking is done on paper, uh, but more of the doing because of the ease of it, because of the, uh, you know, the ability to do things with it. it. You know, it's easy to send off. It's easy to get approved. You know, if I don't have to, I don't even have a scanner. So like I draw this stuff on paper and then I will redraw it on the computer uh, so I try to stay up to date technically, um, you know, so I do both. I, I use both. Okay. They're both good for what they're good for. There are some people who are fully, you know, traditionalists. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's, and it's really good too, to be fully traditionalist. Cause you know, the one thing, if you do digital art all the time, you really have nothing to sell after your book comes out, you know, because all you got is prints, you know, yeah. whereas if you do it traditionally, you've <laughs> actually got a, something physical that you can sell after the fact. And that's indeed how people, you know, comic artists have made money in the past is they, they do, and they, they do their pages mm. on actual Bristol board. They send them off to the company. The company does whatever they're going to do with them. Then they send them back mm. to the artist. So the artist can sell those <clears throat> you know, for extra money. Um, okay. And that's something that is lost for a person who does strictly digital. But lots of places now only want strictly digital because of the ease of access for them to file transfer and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that because I just want to lead up to something. I know uh, Dave has been asking, or, you know, off, off the the stream, but I, I want to set him up for his question about uh, technology today, you know, in regards to different toy companies. <clears throat> and before yeah. we get into, you know, before we get into what we see in front of us, Dave, I'll let you uh, ask away. Well, one of the big things is, um, <clears throat> you know, this came out a couple weeks ago where, or maybe it was last month with Fresh Monkey Fiction, you know, the big bad toy store little horror military thing all their box art was shown up and it was all done by ai mm -hmm. and i just <clears throat> with there's so many people i mean heck we saw miss uh genuinely curious you know she seems to be someone who's getting into art we have a lot probably a lot of aspiring artists hopefully watching us tonight or on the replay club you know why go ai when there is so much you know why why do you think they would go away oh, when there's so much talent out there that would just be willing to almost willing to do it for probably even less than what they paid for for the software and probably be and be better? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's, you know, people do stuff for free just for promotion, for elevation, for, uh, you know, for people to see their stuff. Uh, absolutely. Um, this is the thing. Um, you know, AI art is <laughs> here. And it is a technology that we're going to have to learn to deal with. Now, to me, and me and another guy was talking about this earlier just today and yesterday. You know, it is a good tool. That's probably what it was started out to be. I don't know what the intentions were on it. You know, mm -hmm. artists have always used references there was a time before computers where I had like magazine stacks that I would use for reference. If I was doing an 18 wheeler, you know, I had to have something to look at, you know, and especially in the early infancy of the internet, you know, you had to have photo references, you know, and it, AI would have been something really good for that. But now you've got people who are taking the AI and they're trying to pass it off as their work or pass it off as original work. 
and they they think that it flies because it is you know they put the prompt in <laughs> you know it doesn't work like that you know but you know you Whereas you got a real artist who has worked and anybody who is an artist or a creator of any type will tell you this. I mean, it is such a craft that you have to really level it up. You have to hone it. You have to constantly work at it. I mean, you just have to. And mm -hmm. um, then for somebody <laughs> who's not really that good and all of a sudden, then they start putting out all this realistic looking artwork, you know, obviously. And you can, I mean, you can tell when stuff is AI. Uh, <laughs> I will say that companies and industries, I work in the t-shirt screen print industry. It is a big national company that I work for, for my day job. And they promote using AI. And you have to almost use it because of the time that you know like you have to use it for backgrounds and those sort of things and that's that's what we're looking at guys that's where we are you know uh companies are going to be using these things but i'm what i'm talking about what bothers me is when you move it from being a tool to starting to try to use it as your supposedly your work okay mm -hmm. and you're 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 entering contests with it and you're go for it let it out we know where you're going yeah. with this yeah uh I mean, that is not, that's not fair. It's not right. It's not fair to the people who have put in all the time and the work and the sweat and the tears. Cause I'm going to tell you, you know, when people do something and they spend so much time on something, it becomes very important to them. And that's why some people can't handle the criticism is because their soul is wrapped up into it. And then you've got this guy who comes along and presses a button and make something that doesn't have a, any soul or any investment in it. You know, it, it just feels, it feels bad. You know, it feels icky. And what are you um, referring to for the contest? This, this actually just happened recently. Um, a lot of you guys, especially if you follow a lot of artists, McFarland did a contest where drawing his drawing spawn. And I know a lot of people uh, personally who actually entered that contest. And one of the supposed winners of that contest was an AI artist. So yeah. what, when they start publishing that there is an AI. Admittedly, artist. admittedly. Uh, mm. like, even it, it's it, like, it, yeah, <clears throat> did not even try to hide it or anything. But I'll say this, you know, the pellet grill. we're at the early stages of this, even still. There was a time when I came into t-shirt art, where when I first started doing t-shirt art, I was 15 years old. It was back in the nineties. Computers were just starting to get on the scene. I watched people had, who had been color separating for t-shirts for 40 years, the same way. Hmm. And then computers got into it. And within five years, all those people lost their jobs because they did not go forward and try to learn computers and learn how to do how to acclimate to the times mm -hmm. and they i had one friend who had been doing it for 30 years and he went into he went to back to school to be a mortician i mean i don't know how you get from mm -hmm. you know doing art you look, the, you look at animation I mean, today you know this new x-men cartoon coming out everyone's saying the art's a little weird it's because yes it's actually being a lot of it's, it is being done by cg i'm well, huge in I used to be huge into anime, and almost all the anime today is done with CG. Uh, the last yeah. anime that I know of was that was done by hand was one called Redline, which is absolutely gorgeous, by the way. But that's one of the last ones I know that was actually a hand-drawn anime for the cells. Well, that's color separation and stuff. But then later you get the tablets where you can actually draw directly into the computer. And then, mm -hmm. you know, everything started seeing digital artists. And then, then the, you know, there was these people who were like, they wouldn't accept digital art. And even today, you know, people will see some of my stuff and they'll be like, man, this looks really good. Oh, is, wait, is it digital? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, it's like, yeah. <laughs> like wow. they still haven't lost the stigma. That's, that's amazing. Of di and here we are way past the fact. And I believe with AI, before this thing settles down and, finds its place and how 
we're going to have to go forward with it because there's a level of it we're going to have to acclimate to. Right. I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, I have my own feelings <laughs> about it. I don't know what other people feel about it. I, and I think that's the thing is eventually we'll all get to a place where this is the line, no further, and everybody agrees on it. But right now, everybody's kind of, some people are all for it. Some people aren't. Some people are saying, oh, it's here. We can't do anything about it. I know the thing can't do certain things yet. And, I, and I, my feeling is, and I don't want to sound apocalyptic or anything, but by, by the time that thing is really able to do some of the stuff that I do mm-hmm. and do it really, really good to where I lose my job, I think we're going to be worried about worse things Valid. that it can do. <laughs> you know, that's not artwork. You know, <clears throat> I'm talking, we'll be right. I think we'll be running from it. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. all, I, I tell my wife all the time, you better be nice to Alexa because eventually <laughs> she's going to have her body and she's going to remember all this stuff you say about her. There you go. You know, I'm respectful. Well, so. Speaking of art now, let us talk about these lovely images. Yes. Because yeah, toy collecting, uh, I mean, with your... Again, interacting with the community, you have been kind of getting on, getting out there. This is kind of like a new medium to get your your art out. And oh, I just want to ask you what it felt like getting this in your hand, physically seeing a box with your amazing artwork on it. Oh man! Uh, well, first of all, I was floored whenever you know and. Uh, whenever I was approached to do it. I mean, I had been doing stuff, but I never expected to actually be able to do it. And this is a dream come true, just like the comics. Uh, You know, I'd always, I remember in 1983, reading Secret Wars is when I first got the notion. I couldn't even hardly read yet. I was going by just what I saw in the pictures, but I knew whatever this is, this is what I want to do. And then, you know, and it started from there, uh, the toys that I was buying, you know, I would look at the packaging and all that stuff. And it's always been a thing I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I started doing some work for uh, for Ryan over at 3POA, Mm -hmm. started doing some stuff for his YouTube channel and all that. And then we started Mm -hmm. talking and, uh, you know, and and just back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually, you know, we go into, Hey, wouldn't it be funny if, and it went into action farce and, you know, and then from there it kind of grew, man, whenever I got the job, I was just floored and I am, was so grateful. And let me tell you (laughs) something in this, in this industry and any artist that is in this chat right now, or that's going to watch this video, they'll tell you, Getting paid to do your art is hard to do. There are so many people out there. And that's one of the reasons I, you know, I have been to quite a few cons and stuff. And let me tell you, everybody, when you're able to do something, everybody has a pitch. But they have no pay. You know, they have no payment method. They have no, no, we're just going to do this because it's cool. Well, I can be poor and do cool stuff by myself, you know? (laughs) So, you know, it's, or they want to pay you at the end or, you know, let me tell you this guys, you don't hire somebody to build you a house and, Oh, I'll give it to you at the end. You know, they got to have money for materials. They got to have money for the time, you know? And for some reason, the artists, the art industry, people just don't really look at it very serious. They don't really, they think you're just having fun and you're playing and they're kind of true, you know, but at the same time, you know, this is a craft. This is something that costs me time. It costs me my time with my kids and time. I could be doing something else. Let me tell you something about Bobby Vela. He paid for each one of these and it was before he he asked me, you know, what are you, Hey, let me tell you, I was thinking this number and then I was fixing to give it to him. He says, well, look, this is what I'm going to pay you. And it was like, and I'm obviously not going to, not going to say what it was, but he, he he gave me going rate. Okay. Okay. And I, that Hmm. said more to me 
than anything. Uh, a man who will pay for the stuff that he asked for, that was awesome. And he was very good to work with. He's been very good to work with. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I'm, I'm not, to, you know, trying to kiss butt or whatever. I'm just saying mm-hmm. how it is. That made such mm-hmm. an impression on me because b- one of the biggest fights you have as an artist is the whole mm-hmm. payment issue. So, mm-hmm. you know. So, so working with this series, did he kind of help? Or, I mean, I guess I could say, what type of input did, did, did Bobby Valley kind of give you in regards to setting up series four and the, and the box art and the combat profiles, were there anything like, were there things like he said, Hey, can you make sure you just hit this? Or is he kind of like, here's the people that's going to be in the wave. Show me what you got. Well, it was a, actually a little bit of all that. He gave me some product shots uh, mm-hmm. to look at and he just said, Hey, see, you know, see what you come up with. So that was another good thing. And you, uh, the one thing you got to realize about Bobby is he is, you know, from a comic artist background. And so he and he knew just by looking at my work where I was at. So that kind of put us kind of on the same page there. Okay. But so he knew how to talk to me <laughs> and knew how to relate his ideas. Just put it that way. We're kind of on the same page to begin with. So he gave me the product mm-hmm. shots. He told me you know, see what you can do with this. And then uh, the way I do work, and I'm talking, if I'm doing a $20 job, if I'm doing a 50, 100, whatever it is, I always give somebody a really rough idea to show them, this is what I'm thinking for what you want. And then they look at it and they approve it. And then I'll tighten it up a little bit, give it a little bit more form, a little bit more detail. I'll send it back to them. And I just consistently do that all the way up till we get to the inking because the inking is when it's starting to get engraved. It's starting to get set in stone from here on out. Are you sure this is what you want? Because this is where it's going. Yep. And, uh, and then especially when, then after the inking, I go to the color and I'm like, you kind of like this palette. What do you think? And, you know, a lot of times some people are like, no, I don't like it. Some people will, no, oh, whatever you do is fine with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's kind of the way he was. You know, I'd send him stuff and he'd be like, yeah, good. He'd give me the thumbs up and we just go like that. There was a few edits uh, mm-hmm. from time to time, like, hey, the camo looks like this and I want it to look a little more like this. That's natural mm-hmm. stuff you're going to run into, you know, because uh, that's camo. You know, some people are real sticklers about camo. Some people are real sticklers about every rivet in a gun and where they are located. So you have to be real careful about that. And we're talking about a real world military line. So that's one thing that I wanted to make for sure. That was, you know, really good. Okay. So you said about some edits and, and whatnot. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at the Arctic warfare Republic guard image. Fantastic work. <clears throat> some things in the in the comment section uh, or in you know the so in social media circles in the groups when they received it you know there was a little bit of a of a hesitancy or a question about the color selection for the green now mm-hmm. obviously if you had the figure in hand and I was, i'm really trying to look for mine right now to show up but on the box art it's not a really it's not as similar and they're it's like not why the is minty, it not minty green yes so, so what can you kind of co- can you kind of talk through the decision making for that? Is it was there a reason for the discrepancy, or is it just kind of how it printed out? I'm pretty sure that is how it printed out. Anytime that you do a piece of artwork, you have to be really careful uh, about. Uh, and this is even true. This is something that we constantly have in the printing industry in general. Because uh, I'm in. Uh, the printing industry as a whole. And I'm talking Mm -hmm. even monitors from monitor to monitor, whatever looks like something on your monitor could look different on my monitor. If my monitor is calibrated, Mm -hmm. then you're talking about the difference in the calibration of the printers from printer to printer. Mm -hmm. So um, I could have it if I, and I'm going to tell you whenever he sent the product shots over, I color picked from the product shots 
Gotcha. Okay. So I, w- I was taking, I had like his thing over here and I had my canvas right here and I was taking from the colors just for that, even when it got into the shadows and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that it's the thing that will mm-hmm. always, I don't see how it will ever not be a thing in printing in general. And I'm talking about t-shirts, cups, magazines, you know, anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with that. So I guess the, the other question I have to go with this is, this is not going to be a one-off series of your artwork, hopefully, right? We're going to see I, future I, series, maybe, possibly? Well, I don't... Uh, <clears throat> maybe. There. <laughs> maybe. Maybe maybe we do some more going forward. Um, you know, we talk all the time about different stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see. We'll see what, what shakes out. There's other people at the same time that I'm talking to doing different stuff with. So you're going to oh, really? see a lot more of uh, a lot more of my stuff. And I, I'm telling you, ever since, like I'd said before, ever since, uh, and I recommend this to anybody. Ever since I said, I'm going to be a producer, not just a consumer. Mm-hmm. My the my stuff has multiplied like exponentially as far as the stuff that I've been able to do, the places I've been able to go. I mean, there was a time, guys, I was playing ESO uh, and I had my character and I was playing Diablo and all. And I had my character up to, you know you know, the full uh, full on levels and all that kind of stuff. But my house was terrible. You know, my, this little virtual character was, you know, had all this armor and had all his sets on and worked, you know, perfectly. And, and it was fun and everything. But at the same time, you know, that was time that I could have been leveling myself up. And mm-hmm. I just suggest to everybody, you know, hey, game, have fun. But, you know, if you want to do something, get out and do something, you know, uh, and if you're really passionate about it, then go do it. You know, don't let things, don't let your likes and your wants, you know, hold you back from it. So. Well, you well said, and, uh, three PLA veteran there, V Conley, another great guy. I met him and his lovely girlfriend. Yeah. I did the Bobby. Yeah, Ballad you me. Did a Bobby Ballad me. Yeah. <laughs> and, Going into your into your uh, your day job, Cato wants to know when he can get some action forest underoos. Well, uh, yeah, probably a, we're, we'll have those out pretty quickly. Um, in the product <laughs> shots, we've got some depends that we're working on. So uh, yeah, we're hoping to get a whole line of different uh, coffee mugs and depends and undies and you know so GPs and so of yeah. action forest. I mean, you're doing some amazing stuff with the community. With the well, I love thing. it. And, you know, listen, guys, the, the whole thing with Action Force, it was something lighthearted, funny, you know, for 3POA. But it was also a little way to promote more than just 3POA. Because if you notice, there's there's Chad, there's Cato, mm-hmm. there's, it you know, really there's the ma'am, there's... Uh, the Cato thing brought the whole book down, but I mean... Well, yeah. yeah. So how, how did you choose the team or did it just kind of organically come out through, like you said, the conversations within your, your circles of trust and your, and, and whatnot? I mean, well, when I do artwork, I have, I have YouTube on constantly. Um, I don't watch a lot of new things because I don't, uh, you know, cause you get into the narrative of a show or a movie or something, and then you get to watching it or listening to it a little too closely. You know, with YouTube, people are talking and it's not something that you have to, you know what I'm saying, follow along with uh, as closely as like a story narrative. You oh, know, you've never watched what a junkie on craft builds reviews, sir. You you want to pay yeah. attention to those. <laughs> but uh, but that's what it was. I, I, I put in people Mine, no that I had been listening to and. You know, it being action force, I made sure that it was people who were, you know, action force, people who enjoyed it, people who liked it. And mm-hmm. it just kind of went from there. And then, of course, I went through Ryan, you know, hey, what do you think about this? And then eventually to Bobby, who do you, you know, what do you think about this person? And, 
you know, it's like, you know, it's the green light or the red light or, you know, and there was, there was hardly any red lights, by the way, because, you know, we all pretty much agreed on everybody that was in it. And, mm -hmm. and it was a thing, not, it was, it was a promotion for 3POA and it will be a promotion for 3POA, but in, in, in the coming future, I'll just mm. say that okay. as things progress. But it'll also be something that is for uh, got a little bit of promotion for everybody, you know, for anybody who's involved. And that's what I wanted is to form that, get us all talking, get community going and strengthen mm -hmm. the community and get everybody talking, you know, because I think it's awesome. just good because we're all doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we were all kind of raised around the same time period. We all kind of like most of the same things. And, you know, uh, that is special, you know, that puts us, you know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of my friends around here, they don't collect anything, you know, they're, they, they think, you know, I remember when my sister walked in here, bless her heart, she walked in here and <laughs> into my collector room, she's like, and she was looking around and she looked a little scared at first and she said, well, you know, everybody has their thing. <laughs> but like, <laughs> how you're saying how we're all yeah. the same. I guarantee you go to a toy convention and about 85% of that con is going to be filled with guys looking just like me, gray right. hair, goatee, black t-shirt. Absolutely. <laughs> and a pair of comfy jeans. And we, and we can talk about things that would be totally lost on anybody else. That's from 30, 40 years ago. We don't even know each other, but here we're talking about episode number whatever. You know, yeah. uh, you know, and, and our, our toy that came out and maybe there's something that you know about it that I don't know about. And it's just we're talking. Exactly. And we don't so, even know each other. That's, you know, it's kind of the glue that ties us together. It's awesome. So that's what I love. without without spoiling anything, because I want to ask first off, for those that have not had a chance to read your comic of Action Farce, how can they how can they get a copy of it? Well, right now it's available through membership at the 3POA podcast. It is, uh, if you go over there, it's simple to join. Uh, you can even, uh, I think it's, there's the tater tot level and there's the potato level. I think I, I can't remember. Potato or something. But I think as soon as you join, whatever you join, and you could just join for one month, read the comic or whatever. I mean, for two bucks, mm -hmm. you'd have the comic and you'd be able to have it available to you and read it. It's about uh, 10 pages, I believe. And there's other work that comes out. There's other mm -hmm. stuff that's going to come out. There is, awesome. uh, I, I can tell you, there's going to be more where that came from. It took us a while to decide whether, you know, we wanted to see what the reception was. Reception was mm -hmm. really good. And so uh, uh, we're not doing any printing though. Remember guys, this is, this is kind of parody. It mm -hmm. is kind of its own thing, but it was always meant to be the space balls to George Lucas's Star Wars. Okay, Valid. and one of the stipu one of the stipulations, cool. very smartly, that George Lucas did: you can do this, Mel, but no more, no merchandising. Okay, <laughs> so that's the Absolutely. thing. There's there's not going to be a printed or unless you know, crazily, a lot of people say stuff to Bobby. You got to, <laughs> and it gets you canonized, it? you know, and it gets hey, maybe you could do what they did in space balls where they did the merchandise thing. And just, everyone's always complaining, dude, I was supposed to get the issue. It's always sold out. Right. Yeah. And apparently we have a request to get Kato in a smoking jacket. Yes. yes. Well, it, All right. it, for, for those that have not read it, I highly recommend it. It is a lot of laughs and without spoiling anything, the villain I died laughing the first time when that main page came up. And you'll, ne and you'll never see it was. coming. So, yeah. it but I think off. that kind of, that also kind of leads in what you're saying in regards to the community and outreach and reaching out because not only have you had this very successful comic and other pinups like we show in here, but you also are, are kind of staying current because one of the things you were saying about independence independent companies and doing something that you want to do. We see a lot of this new Kickstarter stuff. Valiverse was one of those items. Mm -hmm. Animal Warriors hey, of a Kingdom. Yeah, Kato, we mentioned now, that. On their second Kickstarter, which is going off like crazy. 
But in the middle here, we have from the Mad Hatter, Flipboard. <laughs> yeah. And I thank you for letting us show this image because yes. it is absolutely fantastic. Well, uh, he, he did post it. Uh, it. Had he not posted it, I would have not mentioned it. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, you know, out of respect for him because I, I treat everything that way. But he did mm -hmm. post it. So we'll be doing some stuff. Not sure the level. We're still talking about everything with that, but uh, I love. I think it's hilarious. the the whole <laughs> <laughs> The whole idea and the storyline behind all this, and I'm really enjoying <laughs> all of his things that he's putting out of these new things that he's doing mm -hmm. and coming out with. And I can't see wait to see where it goes. But uh, yeah, we're doing a lot of talking, and uh. I, I love it. I, I love be, doing all this stuff. I, I talked to Jason quite a bit. I talk uh, Benivu, and uh, you know, I, I'm just glad that I'm even considered to do any of this stuff. And um, you know, it's just it's just such a ball to to talk to these guys. And I tell you, these people. Let me tell you about these guys. These creators, they're pretty amazing because it is one thing to do artwork or to create something. I'm talking about. Bobby Vela, I'm talking about Jason Benivu. I'm talking about even Mad Hatter now, who is just like, uh, man, just this thing is taking off. Uh, I'm talking about Ramen Toy, all these guys. It's one thing to create something, but to take that creation and take it out to people and show them and to get them enthousi th enthusiastic about it. That's a totally different thing. That's where the real work comes in because you're not just sitting there drawing. You know, you're not just sitting there making stuff up. You're actually having to talk to people. You're having to sell them on an idea without them thinking you're selling them, you know, something mm -hmm. and getting them excited about it. And these guys have done it. And that takes a lot of drive because let me tell you, uh, artwork forces you into a solitary life. Because you are by yourself when you're doing it most of the time and mm -hmm. you're not talking to a lot of people. And that's why a lot of artists are very shut off from people and because they're doing something that's so solitary most mm -hmm. of the time. But then you tell them all of a sudden, well, now you've done the comic book or now you've done the creation. Now you've got to go look out there and make people aware of it and tell them about mm -hmm. it. And that's where a lot of people, oh, I can't do that. You know, they fail. But yeah. these guys are doing it, and they're not only pushing it; it'll it's it'll be as, as successful as you make it, as much work as you put into it, as how far it'll go. But if mm -hmm. you can get other people excited about it, they'll push it and share your load, and they've done it. And I, I just think it, I was talking to Jason just today, telling him how amazing I thought it was what he's done with that whole IP, uh, just following along and sticking with it, and just being stubborn about it, and. <laughs> And pushing it. I mean, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So so is it kind of harking back to, uh, as you're saying, you know, these these creative masterminds and what they're doing? I mean, we saw we saw the same thing 30 plus years ago with McFarland, where he just it was basically name and an idea. And next, thing you know, he's producing some to a toy here and there. And now we're looking 30 years later at his success it's it's mind-boggling and again meeting jason at face face-to-face -to -face conventions just you know just the salt of the earth really nice super humble about things um I, I wish nothing but success for all these guys that are braving it out and doing what you're saying taking an idea and just going forward with it because i'm on the other end with my wallet going okay you got me you got it, me. It's amazing. And, you know, that's the thing is uh, they're genuine. They love what they're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. Jason, he loves AWOT. And Bobby, he loves Action Force. He loves what he's doing. And you can tell it by how adamant they are and how uh, protective of it they are. Boy, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's their, it's their babies. And I just think it's amazing. And it also, at the same time, kind of makes me afraid of success <laughs> because I see the kind <laughs> of work that they have to put in. Yeah. To this. And it ought to make everybody think, you know, do I really, you know, <laughs> what am I really doing? Whatever I'm doing for, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, so. and I think you, you need a little bit of you need a little bit of that edge. And and I know as as someone who's who's seen a lot of the stuff going on, you know, the 
the three POA have a reputation as being a little bit of the bad boys because yeah. specifically under Bobby with a chip, he's got his chip on his shoulder, but I think, you know, it's kind of that passion that you're talking about into what's going on. Now, sometimes, you know, the edge can be a little, little sharper than, than expected. But mm -hmm. um, a, as you said, you know, you kind of need it. You need to balance out what you, what you want to represent into the public for yourself and show your passion in a way that's going to draw people in it's not going to draw everyone and that's fine, you know, but, yeah. uh, so yeah, it's, Oh, go ahead, Dave, please. Well, it's going to say, so I guess where I want to know is now, um, obviously you can't say everything. Obviously there's things you would love to say, but probably can't. Yeah. But what's next? Where will we, are we, are you, will we see you with other companies? Do we have actual published art? What with anything, or if you're just going to say, will we see more of you in the company in the industry? If you want to drop us a, a trademark body there, statement, go ahead. There's there's definitely going to be uh, three different things coming out that you're going to be seeing s soon. Awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's as far as I could go. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there's other things that I'm <clears throat> talking to people about so i'm gonna so, see some stuff i'm gonna see more stuff here that when i'm holding the box i'll be like hey i know that guy yep yep i talked That's to that guy awesome. yep and and let me tell you it's a, it's 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 amazing to me it's amazing to me that i've been able to uh be blessed enough to to be a part of all this i mean because i love collecting i love art i love what i do mm -hmm. And I only and but and another thing too I, I only do what i like because i have a day job you know mm -hmm. and i have I have, you know, I have responsibilities and if I'm going to be spending time away from my family and my, you know, out of my whatever time, you know, it's got to be something that really hooks me and, uh, and I love it. You know, I just love it. And I, mm -hmm. I love that, uh, you know, that people would <clears throat> even ask for me to do stuff for them. And I'm not, I don't have like an inferiority complex or anything, but guys, there's a lot of artists out there and, you know, I'm just, I'm just floored to, you know, I'm grateful. So well, there's a lot of podcasts you could have been on and <laughs> we're not going to have an inferiority comp. Okay. I actually do have an inferiority yeah. complex. Come on guys. <laughs> I want to get to 500. Come on. No. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> absolutely. But, we thank you so much for taking your time. Um, thank you for being part of this industry of being part of this community, mm -hmm. allowing us to be part of it. And um, I just think this is on that note. This is a good. This is a good spot on the break on. So um, first of all, I want to. So thank you for coming out, Mike. Thank you for putting this together. Oh, it 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 was uh, it was serendipitous to say the least. Because all I did was uh, randomly message him saying, "Hey, can I? Can we talk?" And uh, I actually was floored when I got a response, and I'm I'm so humbled. For that quentin so thank you very much well i appreciate for, uh, it like i said dave said coming on board tonight talking to us and i uh, really enjoyed it guys thank you so much and y'all are going to be on my playlist whenever i'm doing whatever i'm doing so oh, well, thank you for that junkie crafts and builds true star screamer figure <laughs> action podcast um i want to thank everybody who's in on the live chat tonight and kato um <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy. Kato is one of the nicest people I've ever met. Yeah, he is. Um, I want to thank everybody who's going to be catching this on the replay. Um, mm -hmm. If you are new to the figure action community, please hit that subscribe button. If you're here, of course, enjoying this podcast, hit that like button. Uh, we've got links below to uh, Quentin's Instagram. Uh, he's also in Deviant Art. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, this this has been simultaneously broadcast on Mike's channel. I just forgot to hijack it for my channel, but that's my dang it. I was thinking about that. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry. It's okay, uh, uh, but also on so, what's your other socials? If anything, they just uh, that's that's pretty much it. Facebook, uh, QB, I've got two Facebook pages: uh, Quentin J. Bedwell on Facebook, and also QB Illustrations. You can find me on <clears throat> QB Illustrations if you want just to see more illustrations usually when people will say hey do you have a portfolio i just point them to that okay, i mean i've thought awesome. about doing a website but it's kind of a waste you know you got this oh. i mean social that's, that's platform 
that's the thing I want to mention. I, I mentioned it before. The three words, print on demand. Have you ever considered doing a print on demand art book? Uh, I have actually, and I'm uh, every time I start doing it, I start uh, then some stuff comes up and I get busy. Yeah. So mm. okay, that was that was where before I mentioned print on demand. Like that's something that artists should do. But uh, awesome. Well, again, then. So uh, Oh, I was going to say, are you still open for commissions or is the work now coming up more and more? But if someone it's a little wasn't tough, don't be afraid to message me. It's what I tell people. Um, you know, if uh, sometimes I get a, a few spaces, you know, little increments of spaces, I work pretty fast and I barely ever sleep. So, <laughs> so if, if I have the time to do it, I will do it. Uh, so yeah. don't be afraid to message me a description or, you know, chances are I might be able to, you know, uh, do it. So awesome. Great. Well, well go ahead, Dave, please. Oh, okay. I did the, I did the startup. If you want to do the wrap up. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, again, we can say it as often as we want because it's a great honor again to talk to you and again, and share your creativity that we've been blessed with to see and hear your story from, you know, Starting with just your reading your own comic to having an action figure that is sold off on by your artwork. It's a true blessing and it's it, you have a, a God-given skill that we are all fortunate to see. And I'm happy to hear you know your progression from medical difficulties to full recovery to being so ingrained into the into the toy and comic community that it just sounds like you're going to be busy for a long time. And I love hearing that. <clears throat> awesome. So uh, again, uh, if you know, people reach out to you on your socials, I hear you're going to be on another podcast. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of cool. We got the ball rolling here and we're going to see you and hear you more often uh, yeah. in, on, uh, on YouTube and everything. So um Hopefully that's going to be, you know, if Ryan would actually be your real friend, he would have brought you on the show a while ago, I'm <laughs> sure. But, you know, no, I don't ask him, that. and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. He's got a, uh, I don't know what's wrong with that dude. You know, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's the Washington State thing. That's all. Yeah. Not him. Yeah. There's some State. Seattle people. They're drinking different water and living a different <laughs> life than the rest of us. So you're not lying. <laughs> but, well, with that, everyone, uh, I think Dave, as always, we we click so well, and I'm glad you allowed me to to come on here and do these reaction. I love talking to the community. Um, hopefully, we're going to get some more creative people in here. Uh, yes. Not only do we have artistry, but we have photographers that we're I'm hoping to get on here as well and talk about their craft with making these toys come alive. Um, so, guys, again, please, please, please uh, hit subscribe if you like. And we're going to work hard to kind of give you great shows like we had tonight. And, again, Mr. Bedwell, thank you again. Thanks, and guys. Y'all, it was it was fun. Awesome. I had a good time. All right, then. All right. Everyone, have a pleasant evening. And we'll, take, we'll see you around. Peace. Good night, everyone.